Hey everybody, welcome back to So Face Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we're here watching some Jujutsu Kaisen. We got some comments here today, so let's see what people got to say. Theta, take it away. All right, Alex V9 is back again. Uh, this time from Premature Death, the episode, mm -hmm. not theirs. Before the clarifications, I wanted to inform you of recent news that may improve your experience when watching the series, specifically oh, an episode. But first, I'll give you context. During the release of episodes, uh, I'm sorry, of the episodes of the second season, the staff in charge of animating Jujutsu Kaisen began revealing horrible working conditions on the oh, part no. of Studio Mappa during the production of the anime, overworked and underpaid. Because of this, some of the episodes were not 100% completed in the desired vision, between 90 to 95%. Not that bad. But one specific episode, episode 17, because it demanded greater animation and the staff were exhausted, it was only 30% complete, said by the director. Despite that, it still surprised the viewers. Now, due to the Blu-ray release of the episodes, they have had their respective changes to complete what was missing during the production. Because of this, it has been announced that episode 17 will be developed to show more than what was originally released. Sorry, I was just thinking, what episode are we on again? We are on 11 right now. So, so a ways to go. Movie. Yep. The episode will be released on March 20 or 20th, along with episodes 15 and 16. I would suggest you watch the Blu-ray version. P.S. It doesn't matter to us how you watch it. If you buy it or pi star star te it, just uh -huh. try to watch the Blu-ray version. <laughs> there you go. That's a recommendation. I I think I've only heard of remastering an individual episode twice, and that is now here and the OG Gundam stuff. For we were talking about that where they take like one episode, they cut it out because it was terrible, and then they made a movie instead with it. You you remember that, right? We remember we're watching a remaster and getting them seed as mm -hmm. well. Oh gosh, yeah, we are. But that's like the whole series, right? It's not like an individual episode has been remastered in the middle of the series. I think you're you're mistaken. Uh, episode fifteen wasn't remastered; it was removed. Yeah. That's that's why I'm saying the only other thing I can draw a parallel to is that where it's removed and then they made a movie later. Right. Yeah. So crazy, but a good recommendation. We're definitely going to go ahead and make sure we try to get that uh, or make sure we get the good one. Yeah, you remind me, Griff, because I have a saying, yeah, OK, and then forgetting. Uh, that that honestly sounds just like me, too. So we're going to do our best. Uh, what else we got for comments today? Now, the clarifications of episode 10. Read at the start of episode 11. That's where we're at today, right? Yep, episode 11. Funny, because I send you the episodes, so. <laughs> One, Mechamaro's transmitters are not pre-recorded. He made a post-mortem biting vow to imbue three transmitters with a limited amount of cursed energy and his consciousness to notify the sorcerers of the situation. One of those transmitters have been destroyed by Mahito. Okay, so not an AI, just literally his consciousness. Okay. Two, Ghetto is not alive. His body reacted due to muscle memory. The author mentioned that Ghetto is as alive as an insect that has lost its head and keeps moving. Yeah, uh, I think the only thing we were talking about at the time was like they, the characters themselves, brought up the ideas like, wait, is the soul still here in the body because the soul starts with the body kind of deal or things like that? It's like it brought up an interesting idea, but if he's just, he's obviously dead. He's not coming back. Three, because the prison realm is as sorry is a powerful special grade cursed object. It uh -huh. has certain conditions of use. One of those conditions is that the person to be caught stays within a range of 4x4 four four meters, or 13x13 13 13 feet, for one minute. The other condition is that to move the prison realm, it first has to process all the information that belongs to the trapped person. This is usually instantaneous, but since that person is Gojo, 
well, that will take a while. Yeah, I think I was on point with that one. <laughs> Four, it must be remembered that what the disaster curses want is for the curses, cursed spirits, to change their social position with humans, since these are born from the purest and truest emotions of human beings, hatred, fear, sadness, etc. And yet they are the ones eliminated. For that, the plan they put together with Ghetto, as mentioned in episodes 5, 6, 7, 13, 14, 21, sorry, and 21 of season they 1, talk a lot about it. <laughs> consists of two parts. First, seal Gojo using the prison realm, completed. And second, obtain as many of Sukuna's fingers as possible. Uh, season 1, episode 21, during the school exchange. And offer them to Sukuna to free him, even if it puts themselves in danger. In progress. Right. I think we are rapidly approaching the point where Jogo is going to attempt to enact that plan as quickly as possible before the other cursed spirits go, now nah, we'll just kill them. Thanks for reading. We don't know how many fingers Jogo has. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of an unknown quality, isn't it? He has all the ones from the school, which I don't remember how many that was. And I that's think he had an a unknown more quantity, that. you said. Yeah. We don't know how many right. fingers Jogo has. That's an unknown quantity, you say. Yep, yep. If if I were to guess a number that I think sounds correct from what I vaguely remember, I think maybe the school had four to five, and I think the cursed spirits had an extra two or three. So uh question, Sakuna might Griff. have a whole handset at this I point. I have a question for you. Yeah. Are thumbs fingers? Yes. Are they? they be? Are they, or are they digits? They're, they're fingers. All the things on your hands, those are fingers. All the you things on my one. hands? Yeah. Do you, do you have an extra growth or something? Oh, maybe it's a new finger. <laughs> yeah, maybe it used to. The thumb is not technically a finger, but is often considered one in colloquial language. The thumb is the first digit of the human hand and is different from the other four fingers in several ways. Joints. The, jum the thumb has one joint, while a finger has two. Bones. The thumb has two phalanges, while a finger has three. Position. The thumb is located out of the side of the hand and lower than the four fingers. Freedom of movement. The thumb has, a much, has much freedom of movement and is opposable to tips of other digits. I think if someone cut off my thumb and I see it across the room, I'm not going to point and go, he cut off my digits. You'll probably say, <laughs> he cut off my thumb, not he cut he off cut my off finger. My, he cut off a finger. No. If he cut off two fingers and the thumb, I would say he cut off three fingers. Uh, it's I, I can see where the scientific classification is going, but also... I'm not going to say that in in common language here. <laughs> well, I think you're happen. being hyperbolic because in common language you would say they cut off my thumb. You would never say they cut off my a finger. Because you would want to make sure people retrieved a thumb, especially if there was a finger cutter offer running around. It's like, oh, which which finger did he cut off? There's like 20 others here. Which one is yours? <laughs> I mean, you're laughing, but literally in this scenario, someone just cut off your finger. So who the fuck's to know? <laughs> maybe it this person. The finger pile, yeah. Maybe this person's like using those giant, like uh, I don't know what you call them, the giant scissors that are used to cut through like uh, bone and shit. And oh, you, just... you got like the scissors from Scissor Man, then you know, like the big, comically large ribbon cutting scissors. Well, I mean, you don't have uh, scissors in your um, in your like uh, utensil drawers. Got scissors right here. Yeah. No, I'm saying in your utensil drawer, not in, like your random shit drawer, like your yeah, kitchen. Yeah, I, I got one over there too. Yeah, I have kitchen scissors. Those are supposed to be cutting thicker, harder to cut things. Mm-hmm. But yeah, funnily no. enough, I trust those less than the craft scissors here I have, which are probably 20 years old. <laughs> if there's someone running around cutting off fingers, I wouldn't just assume that yours is the only finger that got cut off. <laughs> So, before we continue on with the weird serial murder mystery of the finger cutter Well, my here, point was that 
what, uh, Sukuna would have 20 fingers, if you're counting thumbs, right. or, yeah. you know, <laughs> or have an extra 18, four, apparently. 18 fingers, if you're not counting yeah. thumbs. Uh, well, the characters are counting 20 fingers, quote-unquote, and we don't know their opinion on thumbs yet, but well, it doesn't seem like they're ready. Well, you remember, Sukuna has, like, tw double of everything. Yeah, yeah. Double set of eyes, double mouths, forearms. So, in that context, then four of those fingers have to be thumbs in context, otherwise only, it wouldn't be a double of everything, right? Only if you're counting thumbs. Yeah. If you're not counting thumbs, that's only 18 fingers. So, the characters of Jujutsu Kaisen, or at least like that small group of them, just kind of collectively agreed, like, yeah, thumbs or fingers. Or... They did just had a day where they sat down and did that. Or... Or, remembering that there's four arms and thus five, uh, four hands, did they just say that he has 20 fingers left of a... Well, that doesn't make sense either. Never mind. All right, all right. No, I got another one. Princess Bride. And Diego Montoyo is after the six-fingered man. And he has four fingers and the thumb. And that is six for him. See, I don't know where you're coming at from here. I have a cousin who has four fingers on each hand. Uh-huh. Yeah, they are at birth. It's For some reason, I never actually got told why. She had her uh, pinky removed from one side of her hand and put where her thumb would be. So oh, okay. that is literally the only case exception I'm going to make <laughs> for the thumb being a finger. Uh, well, good enough for me. So, again, put it away the serial finger cutter case. Let's go to the recap for last episode. Last episode was Pandemonium, where Gojo has been sealed in the prison realm. It is time for the three sorcerer groups to enter Shibuya, save and trap civilians, and rescue Satoru Gojo. Uh, more specifically, everyone is now up to date thanks to the spirit of Mechamaru on what's going on and what the cursed spirit's plans are and where they actively are right now. Um... They, oh, no. they definitely had I mean people the, are up to date now because of Yuji. Yeah, who also was screaming it like across the entire city too, yeah. I agree. Well not the entire city, across all of Shibuya. Yeah. Uh Shibuya and, uh, is a uh, a district, it's not a city. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, completely unrelated and nobody else is gonna know what the hell this is. That planet yeah. was a county, not a country. Okay, so got it, got it. So I'm going to remember that detail, like, for another six days? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think also importantly, the cursed spirits went ahead and disagreed about whether or not they were going to actually bring Sakuna back now at this point, being that that was their plan. Uh, Jogo has decided that he's going to go ahead and try to very quickly get the fingers to Yuji and see what happens. And everyone else is like, Nah, lol, we're just going to kill him, and now they're making a race of it. Uh, so that is essentially the context of where we are. Uh, both groups, uh, Sorcerers and Cursed Spirits, are running at each other as fast as they can. And this has got to be the battle episode, right? Well, they're not running at each other. The they Cursed are Spirits... actively trying to find each other. Yeah. If you have to find another person, then you're not actively running right at them. Because if you had knew where they were to run right at them, you wouldn't be trying to find them. <laughs> One group, Yuji, ostensibly has a pretty good idea of where they are, and the Cursed Spirits also drew out a specific area of where they were going to be. The Cursed Spirits, meanwhile, oh wow, it's not like they have, have any a, idea. It's not like they have a giant dome. You, you were the Cursed Spirits for a giant. You did a circle. You mean like the dome? Yeah. The dome that they're all in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That the dome in the dome in the dome. That doesn't mean anything. Also, <laughs> Yuji knows where uh, Ghetto's body is. He doesn't know where the uh, Jogo and all of them ran off to. He doesn't have some mystical sense telling him where everyone is. <laughs> he would be funny. He literally knows where the train station is at. That's it. He all doesn't right. know where the people are. You want to know what the funniest thing would be exactly at this moment? If one of the cursed spirits pulled out a phone, looked at it, and went, I'm seeing them on the cameras right now. <laughs> but we don't have a that technology. Would, that would make it for me right there. We don't have a technology, cursed spirit. 
We don't. Well, they can still use phones. They have fingers and intelligence. They could totally use a phone, right? <laughs> Having fingers and intelligence does not denote a misunderstanding of technology or an ability to hack cameras. Uh, I mean, they some, didn't maybe set up. Someone else did it beforehand. Yeah, who? Who amongst uh, this group has denoted? <laughs> even when Ghetto was alive, even if Ghetto was like muscle memory could hack shit, he didn't seem to understand technology that well. Welcome to our new ranking chart, everyone. Today we're going to be ranking all Jujutsu Kaisen characters by who can reprogram their VCR first. Which, by the way, the VCR is now uh, 20 years out of date, I'm pretty sure. So, let's go ahead and see what we think. Do you think people <laughs> were still using the VCRs in the 2000s? Uh, it's the first thing that came to mind of things people do not know how to do, even when it was popular. I think the VCR was going out of date in the late 90s. That's no, I think it was we still were, good we had, 1990 No, no, no. We were using DVDs in the late 90s. I know, because that's when the they were miniaturizing the DVDs for... Yeah, was it the Dreamcast that had the mini, mini little DVDs? Or was that the GameCube? The GameCube had the mini DVDs, and that came out a little later, didn't it? What's the, what's the date on the GameCube? I'm going to say late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, Wikipedia, what do you got to say? Release date, 2001. That's what I said. Three days after September 11th. <laughs> Japan. So, like I said, when we're at the point where we're already miniaturizing DVDs, then the VHS player is well out of date. Hmm. Um... I think it's basically a very muddy period where a lot of people kept things. What and year? Find new things what year did the PlayStation come out? Oh, even earlier. Right. So your game playing system also doubles as a uh, DVD player. So who what? the fuck is using? Like I'm just saying, I had a VHS player because I already told you I was buying uh, VHS tapes of Dragon Ball Z back then. But I'm just saying. That's still outdated. When the PlayStation oh, One came out, was... when the PlayStation One came out, that is officially when the VHS player became outdated and obsolete. All I know is the Blockbuster in my area didn't close until like 2010s or later. <laughs> determining when Blockbuster went under is not the determining factor of when uh, the VHS player went under. Also, Blockbuster did rent DVDs, so I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I like that I started this with they would totally use smartphones, and then went they would have no idea what to do with a VCR. <laughs> I have now labeled uh, them not as millennials. What's the one after that now? My problem with this is that your joke is so old that I remember it from Beetlejuice that the Deets Which was is, even older. <laughs> the Deets is who by the way, live in a house that I don't remember a TV being in. Well, yeah, there was mm -hmm. like one, one TV in the attic that they make jokes about this is more complicated than programming a VCR. So backward hillbillies are the level of technological advancement that you're leaning into with your joke. Oh, there we go. I've been exposed fully now. But, Theta, what about today's episode? What are you looking what forward to? What about it, Griff? Yeah, what about what it? What about it? <laughs> what about it? What about it? Uh, but, yeah, give me, give me something to work off of. Give me, like, one thing you want to see today. I just tell, read you a whole thesis about what to expect. What are you talking Not about? Not VCRs, apparently. <laughs> All right, then. I think in that case, let's just go ahead and watch for the day. But before we get started, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below to feed that algorithm. On top of all that, if you want to watch more shows like this, unfiltered, uncensored, and uncut, as well as some really access stuff, you can go ahead and follow us over on the Patreon. It's just $5 a month, but no pressure. It's all to support the channel, just a little bit extra. Click the link down below, join the Discord. Let me know, were you a Betamax or a VHS person? Well, that's a cool effect. Damned, you to Ma, 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 no,
マジかこいつ打撃だけならナナメさんとタメ張るんじゃないかつうかだからこそ相当強固な帳ですねどこか脆いところを探して一瞬でもいいから穴を開けないと中に入らないことには始まらない<笑>えなんでなんでっていいかこれは術師を入れない帳つまりバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアなんだよバリアコロンブスの卵というか卵いやでも結界術の基本ガン無視してんじゃねえかとんでもねえやつだなこれならさっきの板取りの一撃で破れなかったのも納得がいくその理屈なら帳の元はかなり目立つところにあるんじゃないですかより見つかるリスクを抱えてさらに強度を上げてるってわけか Oh yeah now I remember from last time They showed us off who's doing it. And then they spot them from a mile away. Right, because I thought it was the clone guys from before. That turned out to be this Jin looking fucker. And the grandma from Akira. I, I, it's so funny that I look at their color palette and it's all the same white and then black bottom, but they all have like these completely different silhouettes and styles. That, that just fun. So, if he doesn't have any powers, he's just dead now, right? He's in the air at least 30 stories up. Why would you think they have no powers? Well, no power to literally fly is what I'm saying. Like, if he doesn't have one, he's dead, right? <laughs> I guess it's just assumed that they've already picked up the ones that Yuji saw in the uh, the tunnels. Yeah, I, I think that's correct. He, he definitely noticed them, but we never got a moment of him actually pulling them out, did we? So we've never seen him fight before. His his power is to become Batman, apparently. I'm pretty sure his power is to become a first grader. He he fell from a bit too far to be so fully complete. Oh, 41 floors. I mean, he could have one of those deals that makes his body super strong and gives him no actual source of powers. Oh, very true, very true. He does have like a bodybuilder feel to him, doesn't he? I don't know what you're talking about. He doesn't I mean, seem like, like a Toto to me, if that's what you're talking about. No, I guess, like, Toto is a good example of, like, the modern bodybuilder who's, like, you know, like, this huge triangular build with massive muscles. I'm thinking more like Charles Atlas, which is, like, body weight. Because he, like, has that whole aesthetic going on for him. He looks like he's about to go to the gym in the 1960s. I think what you're talking about is the difference between a weightlifter and a bodybuilder. 
Yeah, yeah, I like, think so. Like the new um, God of War Thor would mm -hmm. be a weightlifter, whereas Charles Atlas mm -hmm. would be a bodybuilder. Which I don't know why you're still using Charles Atlas as an example. Charles Atlas would be in the same category as, say, Arnold Schwarzenegger as a bodybuilder. Um, not nah, debatable. I, I don't think they're I, actually in the same category. No, they are not debatable. They're both bodybuilders. Then again, Arnold I'm not Schwarzenegger is Arnold's a, workout routine. What does he do? He's a bodybuilder. I mean, literally, his, that's his specification. He's not a weightlifter. He's not going to be competing in the world's strongest man competitions. That's the difference between a weightlifter and a bodybuilder. The, these right, big, no, but I'm these big chunky, uh, like Nordic guys that lift the balls up onto the pedestals. Those are weightlifters. There's a third type that you're missing, and that's the body weight uh, athlete who is much uh, bodybuilder thinner than those. No, that's a bodybuilder. Nope, nope, different. Nope, different than what you're describing. Well, I'm telling you the two classifications, and if you can't accept that, then I don't know, watch more ESPN. <laughs><笑> Oh, summons. Or just drills. Ow. <laughs> Nobody ever, like, denotes that it hurts anything. Yeah, these guys are pretty basically immune to damage, it seems. Or, like, pain, I guess. Iceman from the X-Men. Hell yeah. Oh, that's funny. He's the oiled up guy from Family Guy. But no cuts. Yeah, he's... This guy is actually just not taking damage. <laughs> I wonder if it's like a Dorian Gray situation. Oh, there's someone else out there taking the damage for him. I mean, it would be an explanation. I do love how our two characters are fighting just guy with knife. <laughs><笑> Unless it's, you know, name of episode, the seance that she's doing is keeping them immortal or something. Ooh, oh, that that's a good point. Because when we've seen other people do berries before, they don't have to, like, do that same kind of chanting or stuff. And the barrier is currently just dealt with by the nails, like they've explained.
And now he took the fuse out of my light. <laughs> Monster face. Oh, we're getting there. You're right. Oh, he, no, he looks like, uh, what's his name? The guy from the beginning of the season. I'm trying to remember the name now. Damn it. I think I know who you're talking about, though. Oh. They're about to show us. I'm older than Gojo. Papa, Mary to a sleaze? I guess so. Not anymore. Papa, Wow。I've terminated her apparently. <laughs> I gotta be begging for please at least kill me first. Gosh, yeah. Oh, there's some imagery. Oh, he's the guy who's down there fighting the other two. He has the same grin, even though he has a different face. Ah, there we go. That makes sense. Gojo,悟る。ええ。ご条件に生まれた陸岸の子供です。ガキ。すでに。What a place to have a conversation. This isn't the guy that we just saw die, is it? The guy no, who we thought was a good guy this whole time. No, I don't think so. The guy with the glasses who's been giving them rides everywhere? No, no, not at all. It's our same suit. Same hands, it looked like. They did kill him recently, so it's possible, actually. I mean, that's why I'm saying it might be the fake out. Yeah. Oh, it stabbed you in the back 17 times. Turns out you're still alive. Just recently, present day, mind you, not 1980, whatever this is. is. Well, he was born in 1989, now he's like precocious kids. Good scenes, like he doesn't even turn and look at anyone, but everyone's frightened. <laughs> Yeah, you remember how everyone in the world stopped and looked at the sky the moment Usain Bolt built the defeat of the track record in the Olympics. So there we go, dealing with the jealousy of being not even second best anymore. Oh, 
the Chakcha of Chuli Suru. Yeah, but the younger kid wasn't in those flashbacks. You know, the one that's up there with the grandma. Right, right. <laughs> ごちそうさとるがすり屋に来てる。さっさと帳に are you responding to something else? Yeah, the, to the text on the screen. Yeah, no, I said he's bruised now. I was about to start talking about what bruised him versus something else. I don't know what you're talking about now. And now I've looked away from the screen for a moment, so I don't know what the hell else I missed. Your confusing ass. Oh, I saw this in a re-zero. Careful, they're killer rabbits. You know, they were in re zero. Oh, I don't know. I thought I said she's like two. <laughs> Well, you're doomed. Yeah, it's literally him. He's back again. I don't know how anyone's going to defeat the guy who almost beat Gojo before he ascended. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's just straight up comical. That's a Looney Tunes attack. <laughs> Guess he's even stronger than before, because before he wasn't throwing cars. Where he's literally undergoing like some Superman development right now. かかってきたね。よしよし。俺の術式は浴びこべだ。術式発動中、俺に当たる攻撃は強いほど弱く、弱いほど強くなる。ああ、オッケー。俺の術式を当てた後のカウンターをかわせた奴はいねえ。so just one of them needs to fuck up once. Or they already guessed it right. Well, he said he did. That's one thing to have guessed it right. It's another thing to actually fucking name it correctly. Oh, you are definitely on to the right uh, path, Dana. It does make the envelopment of rabbits the worst thing for him, too. Yeah, 
Yeah, be a bitch to kill yourself brushing your teeth. Yeah. I guess that would mean you'd have to brush your teeth with maximum force. Whoops, hugged a little too gently, now I'm dead. あ、だが術式に気づいたことを悟られたくない。俺たちはこのまま全力で馬力をアピールする。初めは打撃力の低いガマ。そこ <笑> Good way to end a fight. It's just like we just gotta punch him to death. Well, we had to punch him weakly to death. Ah, oh, good fake out. That's just where we end. <laughs> it feels like he, this guy would have been defeated by any one of those people in like animes that goes for the punch and then just like flicks you in the nose. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the that, classic uh, martial arts tease. That's his, that's his kryptonite right there. Uh, at least that was like an entertaining fight. That's like, I guess in terms of fight, it's literally a bottle fight. It just, this is it. That's all we have. You could probably skip over it and go to like the conclusion of let's go. Oh, yeah, yeah. We just we just killed him off screen. <laughs> but it's it's fun for the entertaining uh, watch of it, right? Well, I mean, it's interesting because what's his name is here. Uh, it's not Toji, is it? It's Toji. I think it is actually. I think you are right. Uh, but yeah, if he's up on the roof, he's been planted as our B-plot, and now he's gonna come back and threaten the two who basically cleaned up down below now. Well, he's the guy who defeated, uh, Gojo before Gojo fully activated. Mm -hmm. So conceivably, I don't see anybody being able to stop him in the regular group. Yeah, who who possibly could? Literally no one else could, like... How long ago was that, like... Five years ago in the show? Okay, so our nine to five is coming back. Hey. Alright, so before we go back to them uh finishing things off, we're gonna go ahead and see a different fight. Hell yeah, let's do it. Uh, alright, so, uh, I guess in terms of, like, the greater plot happening, Theta, did anything happen that episode that affects it outside of, like, just the fight? Like, did we learn anything? Toji came back. I guess so, or Toji's power is now contained within the most stone-faced, uh, grandson possible? Like, they- His they could face be changed. He's morphed into Toji. All right, but before that, his entire personality is what I would call completely flat, right? I don't think that he... matters, though. I'm saying he changed into Toji. For all intents and purposes, he's Toji right now. Is he? That's actually a... All right, that actually becomes a good question of what actually happened to him. Is he now possessed by some amount of Toji? Is he turning into Toji? The grandma is, is he a just medium. Like him and have his power. The grandma's a medium, which implies to me that she's channeling Toji. That is a really good point, right there. That would make absolutely perfect sense. So yeah, if we have Toji back at his full power, doing his full thing. 
Yeah, everyone's doomed. <laughs> what do you do? Who has anything? You Yuji's not just gonna power through it, right? Well, maybe he could. He doesn't really go around sensing curse energy in the first place, really, does he? I don't know, because remember when we saw Toji defeated, it was both Gojo's Awakening, and we don't know how strong Gojo pre-Awakening was as compared to Yuji. Right, it's like the coughing baby got killed by the hydrogen bomb. We can't really scale that together anymore. So, yeah, no, we have no context for is it even possible for anyone else except that everyone else lost. Uh, I guess also the context is they had like a single shard of bone or something. I think that's all they had there. Is that enough to get his full power? I don't know. That could be another like fun little complicated element. Uh, but we're gonna see, I guess, the 9 to fiver interacting with them first, or just doing their own thing. I don't know what they're actually up to right now. He went in a different direction, remember? Okay, so he's gonna encounter a different set of demons. Maybe round two with Mojito? Or... No, it'd be like three or four now, isn't it? Two? I don't uh, know. He fought in the sewers, he fought with Yuji... I guess it would be round three. I don't think there's another time where he specifically fought Mojito. I think when I was thinking three, I was thinking of the kids from the movie that Mojito turned into the human blobs, basically. Uh, but that doesn't count because that wasn't Mojito himself they're fighting. What was the second time? Uh, Yuji and uh nine to five fighting mojito right at the right never mind Jinpei's yeah because they fought in the uh sewer once yeah. by themselves too okay yeah so round three the person most experienced with fighting them that would be like the obvious matchup to me do it again and show what everybody's learned and make them all more of a threat and or make nine to five even cooler because he's also learned or like improved in some way that that's obvious to me but it could be any of the other pairings. I think if it's like 9 to 5 versus Jogo, uh, Jogo loses. I feel like that's Jogo's destiny, ultimately, right? So Gojo couldn't kill Jogo, but you think 9 to 5 could kill Jogo? Uh, it's a good point, because I think uh, Jogo has, like, he understands the curse energy, he's doing all the weird stuff now, he knows how to protect himself, so he could have more of a, like, even fight, I guess? It's like the combination uh, of names. Gojo yes. and Jogo. I know, it's always gonna be the favorite tongue twister there. Uh, so there's Jogo, Mahito, was there anyone else rushing out there at this very moment? Choso? Joso? Choso. Wait, which one's that? The blood one? Oh, okay. That's the right. one I with the brothers? The blood sorcerer dude is just hanging out in the background. <laughs> it's not a blood sorcerer. I don't know. I think that the half breed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They, I think that's what he actually is. You're right. Uh, but he does the blood stuff. I, I guess him versus 9 to 5 would be a thing, but I think the way he's been portrayed is that he's not that powerful of a frontline combatant or anything like the cursed spirits are he's just a extra element there that is there to take pot shots where possible right i don't know i don't he, know because i remember he was somebody. doing a couple of things in that fight but i don't know if he's not strong enough to be frontliner or he was just taking advantage of situations yeah, we haven't seen it happen yet, so we can't compare. But the, by the behavior, I would say he is not as strong as everyone else. At least not in the fight versus Gojo. <laughs> Where you don't want to be next to him ever. Well, I mean, that was just a fight made to spend time, so it wasn't even about defeating him. Yeah. So, Beta, you got any thoughts about the episode today? That was it. All right, in that case, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up here for the day. This has been Selfish Reactions, everybody. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we'll catch you next time. See you around. 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy? <laughs>